Unit 2, Video Lecture 3, Density. Well, if we're going to determine, if we're going to figure out density, first we need to do is figure out different ways that we can determine the volume. Well, there's two major ways to determine volume. The first is to use the equation length times width times height. But what if the object is irregularly shaped? We could then use the volume displacement method to find volume. First, taking a look, if we're dealing with a rectangular cube, we can determine the volume of the object. We could determine the volume of an object that's four centimeters long, three centimeters wide, and two centimeters high. We can do this by using that equation: volume equals length times width times height. So volume equals 2.0 centimeters times 3.0 centimeters times 4.0 centimeters, and we get a total of 24. Now, when we look at our units, we have centimeters times centimeters. When we have centimeters times centimeters, we have centimeters squared. This is why it's important to remember when we're doing our conversions that our, we need one unit on top and one unit on the bottom to cancel out. Because if the same unit is on top and we multiply the units together, we get the unit squared rather than getting it to cancel. Well, in this case, we're taking centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So since we're doing three, it's centimeters cubed. So the volume of this object would be 24 cubic centimeters. To do the volume displacement method, we start with a given amount of water in our graduated cylinder. In this case, it's 1.5 milliliters. Because remember, when we're reading the volume of water in, in a graduated cylinder, we read from the bottom of the meniscus. If we have an irregularly shaped object, we can then take it and place it into the graduated cylinder. Once we put it into the graduated cylinder, that water level is going to rise. Now that we have the new volume, 1.9 milliliters, this is the result of the water plus the object is 1.9 milliliters. Well, we know that the volume of the water, when we first measured, was 1.5 milliliters. So to solve for the volume of the object, we simply subtract 1.5 from each side. In this case, the object is 0 0.4 milliliters. So let's take a look at another example. We want to measure the volume of a toy dinosaur. We can't measure the length, the width, and the height, so we need to use Archimedes principle, the volume displacement method. We take an initial reading of the water, and in this case we see it to be about 4.80 milliliters. When we place the dinosaur into the water, we see that the water level rises from 4.8 milliliters to 5.60 milliliters. So, to determine the volume of the dinosaur, we take the volume of the water and the dinosaur, 5.6, and subtract the initial volume, 4.8. When we take 4.80 away from 5.6, we see the volume of the dinosaur to be 0 0.80 milliliters. You want to find density, you have to get the mass, record the grams, figure out the volume too. You do the mathematics, division is the one you choose. You take the mass 
Divided by volume at last You're gonna get something new That relates the two Easy to remember for you It's grams per cubic centimeter For the unit you use It's grams per cubic centimeter For the unit you use La la Grams per cubic centimeter for the unit you use. It's grams per cubic centimeter for the unit you use. Density. You want to find density. You have to get the mass. Record the grams. Figure out the volume too. You do the mathematics, division is the one you choose. You take the mass, divide it by volume at last. You're gonna get something new that relates the two. Easy to remember for you. It's grams per cubic centimeter for the unit you use. It's grams per cubic centimeter. For the unit you use La, 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 la It's gonna be grams per cubic centimeter For the unit you use It's grams per cubic centimeter For the unit you use Yeah! So like you saw, density is a ratio comparing an object's mass to its volume. The units are grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter because these are two units we can use to measure volume. Pay attention to this symbol. Remember that when we divide on a calculator, this is the button that we press. So since we're dividing, we can consider our units this way. The equation for density is density equals mass over volume. So, let's practice. Suppose a sample of aluminum has a mass of 13.5 grams and a volume of 5.0 cubic centimeters. What's the density? Well, we know that density is mass over volume. We're given mass at 13.5 grams and volume at 5.0 cubic centimeters. So our equation, D equals 13.5 divided by 5.0. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get a density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. We see our units for mass are grams. Units for volume are cubic centimeters. So let's take a look at another one. What's the volume of a sample that has a mass of 20 point grams and a density of 4 grams per milliliter? Well, again, we're still working with density equals mass over volume. The mass here is 20 grams, and the density is 4. So when we put these into our equation, we see 4 equals 20 over the volume. Now remember, Whenever you're, de whenever you're dealing with a ratio like this and we have an unknown, your first step is always going to be the same. No matter if the unknown is in the numerator or in the denominator, what we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the value on the bottom, in this case volume. So now we have volume on the top, volume on the bottom, they cancel out, and we're left with 4V equals 20. We then simply divide by 4. V equals 20 divided by 4, so the volume is 5 milliliters. Well, now that we've talked a little bit about density, let's talk about why ice floats on water. Well, when water as a liquid has molecules that are packed together and we know from our phases of matter that there's spaces in between 
these liquid molecules. But what happens with water, and this is unique to water, is that when water freezes, those water molecules actually spread out, taking up a greater, there's a greater area in between water molecules. This means that the water molecules takes up a greater amount of space, and this increased volume leads to a different density. The density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter. You may want to remember that. But the density of ice is 0.92 grams per milliliter. So again, why does ice float on water? Well, let's assume that we have 100 grams of water and 100 grams of ice. We can see this difference in volume. We can see this difference in volume by working with density of water is equal to 1.00 equals the mass of 100 grams over the volume. So again, we multiply each side by volume. 1V equals 100. Divide by 1, volume equals 100 milliliters. But remember the density of ice. The density of ice is 0 0.92 grams per milliliter. And that's equal to 100 grams over the volume. And multiplying by V, now we have 0.92V equals 100 grams. Divide each side by 0.92. And the volume of, of ice is 109 milliliters. So since the density of ice is less than the density of water, it floats. It doesn't matter how much ice we have, whether we have one ice cube or an entire iceberg. Lower density objects float and higher density liquids. You can actually use this to create rainbow columns using things of different densities. If we take a look, this rainbow column is made up of lamp oil, rubbing alcohol, vegetable oil, water, soap, corn syrup, and maple syrup. And notice that their densities are all different. As we start to, as we start to go down, the lamp oil with the least, the least dense, so it's on top. The rubbing alcohol is the next least, followed by the vegetable oil, followed by the water, followed by our soap, our corn syrup, and our maple syrup, or our honey on the bottom. So this is the highest density, and this is the lowest.